today I'm going to show you how to create this little animated blast symbol that you can use in your maps to visualize things like bombs, airstrikes, fires, whatever you want really. So inside of After Effects, I'm going to create a new composition and I'll call it Blast. And I want this to be perfectly, like have a square aspect ratio. So I'll change the width and the height to 1000. You can do whatever size you want. And the duration of five seconds. Now I have this little comp here. I want this to be like, I want this blast to be symmetrical, like going out in the same direction. So I'm gonna go up to the shape tool and grab the ellipse, hold shift and double click. That will give us a perfectly symmetrical ellipse. And then I'm gonna open up the shape group here in the actual path. And I'm gonna bring the size down to 200. So this will be the relative like size of our blast, which is perfectly fine. And I'm gonna rename this layer guide because we're just using it as a guide. We can actually turn it into a guide layer by right clicking and selecting guide layer. What that's gonna do is it will not export it um, when we render this out. So it's a proper guide layer. And I'll grab the opacity and just bring this down and then lock it off. I also wanna manually add some actual real guides because I'm gonna be wanting to put some of my vertices in specific areas. So to do that, go to the view menu and select show rulers, which is control R. And now you can grab within the ruler here and bring out a guide. And you can manually and very precisely put them where you want by right clicking on them and selecting this edit position. And now I can like manually type in 500, which is 500 pixels, meaning it's gonna put it right in the middle of our comp because our comp is 1000 pixels. I can do it with a vertical one as well. Let's do another 500 pixel value. Boom, we've got our guide. I also want guides on the edges of my ellipse, so I'm gonna drag out two more vertical guides and just subtract 100 and add 100 to the 500 um, pixel value. So we do 400 and 600. There we go. Now as a, a last step, I need to lock off these guides because there's nothing more annoying than accidentally moving a guide that you don't wanna move. And then make sure you have snap to guides selected, otherwise, what the heck is the purpose of using guides? Okay, I'm gonna go grab the pen tool. Now I'm ready to draw out my actual like little blast visual. And I want the blast to be like flat um, and then kind of shoot out in a semicircle. So I'll start over here and I'll just start to draw out some little triangles that are like going out from the center of this circle. And don't worry about being perfect because we can always edit this and change it to our heart's content. And then to close it off, click back here. And now with the pen tool still selected, now you can jump in here and start to grab and move these if you want. If like some of these were a little too far off, you can like bring these back in and then grab this one and make sure that it snaps right in the corner here. And then same one with this one, just so that this is the symmetrical part. That's the only part that I want to be really right on. Now if I click, I can look and see if this is what I want. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. So now I'll click on the layer and I'm just gonna rename this blast. Now, side note, I'm gonna be creating, the whole purpose of this is I want, I'm more like function than fashion. I wanna be able to use this as an animation preset that I can apply quickly. I want it to loop and I want it to be one layer so that when I click on the preset, double click it, it just creates it. It's animated and it's looping. I don't have to worry about anything. Now there's two things that are gonna happen with this is the fact that we can we have to do the entire animation in one shape layer. So that's gonna limit, number two, that's gonna limit like the detail that we can get into with our actual animation and the look of it, which doesn't matter too much because I want something simple. I want a very simple cycling between a small blast and a large blast as you saw in the beginning. That's the lowdown. So I'm gonna jump back into the contents here. Now let's create the small blast. So I'm gonna turn off our guide. I guess we don't really need this anymore. Turn off the visibility of this. Now what I wanna do is I have a shape group here and the shape group has trans their own transformation properties, which is really important. So I'm gonna be working with diff different shape groups and grouping these shape groups. So this one, um, I'm gonna call this outer blast. And then I'm gonna duplicate it by holding Control or Command D and then duplicating it and then renaming this one inner blast. And you'll notice that as these are selected, it shows me a bounding box, as long as I have the selection tool up. And now I can actually click and drag and like quickly resize these, which is great. This is exactly what I wanna do. And the, the basically the parameter we're messing with here is the scale of the shape group. So if I jump in here, there's transformation properties for the actual shape group, and you'll notice that this is the scale right here that's being affected. 
So let's say we want our inner blast to be about that size. That's looking good. Now, to actually like knock this out, let's say the look we want is we're gonna have the small blast and then the large blast, but the large blast is gonna have like the small blast subtracted from it or knocked out so that you can see the alpha. There'll be nothing there. So to do that, you just grab the inner blast, you place it below the outer blast shape group, and then you deselect it, and then you come over here and you add a merge paths um, effector, animator, whatever they call it. And the placement of all these is very important because if something's not working right in your project, it's because you're not following these steps and the placement is probably off or you put a group in another shape group. This can get really confusing and if you mess something up, it can just be very you know easy to get lost. Now switch the mode of this merge paths to subtract and then bang, we now have this, which is a great like little still icon if you want it. if you want to use it now, like just you know go use this. This is perfectly fine. You could like slap like a blinking opacity effect, which I created by the way. You know, that would work great on this. But I'm gonna do like a custom animation here. I have this. Now I need to create the animation of like small blast to large blast. So how do we do that? Well, first we're gonna group all of these. We wanna group the outer blast, inner blast, and merge pass all together by selecting them and saying group shapes. That's gonna put all of this in a new group with a new transformation property. Um, so now I'm gonna name this and I'll call it large blast. So now I'm gonna have another shape group with the small blast, which is essentially this inner blast, right? So if I duplicate this inner blast and I drag it outside of this group, hang with me, and then I rename it small blast. Now we have small blast and large blast with the small blast cut out. So now we're ready to animate and all we need to do for this animation is essentially have the opacity animated for each shape group and then offset them and loop them. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So what we'll do here is first we'll focus on the small blast. You know what, I probably wanna save this. Open up the shape group uh, transformations and then go and with my playhead at the beginning, add an opacity keyframe. We want the small blast to be first. So this will be up first at a 100% opacity. It'll go down to zero. And then it's basically gonna loop like ping pong. And then for the large blast, it's gonna start off at 0% and go to 100. And that's why they're offset. So now I'm just gonna go a couple of frames here and we'll bring the opacity here down to zero. And now I'm gonna add an expression. Don't be worried if you don't know code um, this is the only expression I'm gonna add and it's very simple. I'm just gonna alt click on this and I'm gonna type in loop out and you can just hit enter when it auto selects. And now our like cursor is in the parentheses, add, um, add quotations and then you get four options here, select ping pong. So what that's gonna do, and then you can click off. What that's gonna do is gonna animate to the parameter and then back and then bing, 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 bing and ping between 100 and zero, essentially like just constantly making it blink like this. See, now we've got this, which is cool. You know, again, we're creating an animation preset because if we just had this on a layer, we could just add a blinking opacity and just do it a little, we could do it keyframeless, but this requires a little bit more work uh, to make it good. Now what I can do is I can go back here and I can just copy, um, just copy this and it's gonna copy not only the keyframes, but also the expression. And now I can paste it like right on the large blast shape group with it selected. Make sure your playhead's in the same spot, paste it. Now we have that. However, um, if I turn the visibility of this one back on, they're blinking at the same time. So if I go back to large blast, well, now actually you can just hit the U key and it's gonna bring up the keyframes here. So now just grab large blast, right click, go to keyframe assistant and then time reverse those mamma jammas. And now we should have a little bit of an animation here. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Okay, now we have our animation here. And it's looking pretty cool. You can customize this to your heart's content. You can change the speed by simply dragging and moving these two end keyframes around. You can add some ease on those if you wanna make the animation look a little bit different. You can turn them into hold keyframes to make it, you know, not animate, just uh, quickly switch between these. So. Let's now turn this into an animation preset. So for this, you just go to the layer and you actually have to grab the contents right here and then go to the animation menu and say, save animation preset. And I'm gonna call this blast01. Let's say we're gonna make like a whole library of these. 
Okay, so now I have an animation preset, and I actually have a GeoLayers project set up here. And what I'm going to do now is go to the Effects and Presets panel. So you just open up Effects and Presets here. And if we go to Animation Presets, User Presets, we should see it right here. And now what's very cool about this is if I just double click, it's going to add it right here. And now we can't really see it because it's against this like light base map. So I could just add a fill here, and now it'll be red. And now what I could do is just grab this and kind of move it around and then get it where I want and simply pin it to the map. So I'll pin it right here. That will pin it to the map. And then I can maybe change the scale, uh, have it scale with the map. So. And now what this is going to do is um, what's really cool about this is the fact that since we made it flat, when we pitch the map, it's going to move along with the map. As always, if you want to get the project file as well as this animation preset, you can head over to my Patreon page. There's a link in the video description for that. And if you want to master GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 masterclass. Once again, linked in the video description. Thanks again and see you in the next one.